Welcome to Malik Jio 34 channel. This is Malik Arjun. Uh, in today's session, I'm going to explain you how listener works and how listener registration is going to happen in Oracle Rack and what are the parameters uh, to build your new listener services uh, and then how to register them. So, uh, if you see my Oracle Rack uh, future internal series, uh, I already covered a couple of topics uh, on Rack architecture, VIP and scan and scan listeners and networks. So all these topics are already uploaded to my YouTube channel. So if you are new to my channel, I request you to go back to YouTube, search for Malik034 channel and then please do watch my previous videos and then stay tuned for my future videos. If you like my videos, please share, comment and like. Let's get started with the today's session. Listeners and uh, its services and how the registration works in Oracle Rack. Uh, basically, uh, service depends upon my database. If you have a number of database, you can define your uh, services on that database. Okay. Per default, uh, you know, uh, database instance will register all the services in its host and all the listener in a register with. What it means like, if you define one services on a on a any particular database, by default all the in all the listener all the instances will registered with that services for example whenever you uh, create a database the default uh, service will be created show parameter service sorry show parameter okay service name default db name is become my service name this is a default service get created when you create your database okay how this service registration is gonna happen there's a process called LREG you know listener registration that will run on every 60 second and that will discover your uh, service and it will register with your listener first instance will start and then listener will start and then listener is available for service registration whatever service you defined in your database or in your cluster that service is going to register with the listener so what all information it is going to pass it to the listener okay during the registration process LREG process right LREG listener registration process sends information such as service name and instance name information you know for the registration purpose this is called service registration this service will help us you know connecting to the database you can use make use of the service name to connect your database and then service operates within the following boundaries if you define any service in a cluster that has a limitation or that has a boundary one is network and other one is service pool these are the two hard dependency i can say it is it operates within these boundaries of network and the service pool. So you have to define this network and service pool while you creating your any particular services. Okay, how to create services? I'm, I'm going to give a demo on uh, my database name is devdb and I'm going to create my service. A service detail adds service and database name, my service name and uh, what is my uh, you know initial pool and uh, you know uh, secondary pool I'm going to run this command okay service created this is the help if you want to get more information hyphen r right hyphen r preferred instances i want my service preferred instance instance one is going to be my preferred instance hyphen a is going to be my available instance if you see my command here i given instance one as my preferred instance and instance two as my available instance can define all these parameter when you define your uh, service okay, next to check the service service detail status service name okay 
Okay, it's not running. I'm going to start the my service. Okay, started. And then again, I'm going to check my service now. Okay, it's running on instance one. And then if you want to check the configuration of that service, SRL config service and my service name, hyphen D database name, hyphen S service name. You can see service name, service name, service is enabled and service pool and cardinality. All these are, you know, uh, the properties of uh, that service. You can see preferred instance is instance one and available instance is instance two. And to modify, there is a modify service name. You can give, I have mentioned basic, you can mention none. This like using a service shell modify, you can modify your services. And then to remove your services, a service shell remove service. And to verify the service name, uh, go back to your cluster CRS CTL. I am running it from node 2 CRS CTL chat resource hyphen T. You can see right dev db my service dot s svr right. It's online online on node 1. Okay, so to remove that. Now we have successfully created services. You can use that services for your uh, any application connectivity purpose. And then I am going to remove my service. It is going to fail now because my service is up and running. You can see right resource already be still running. I need to first shut it down and then remove it. So then what I will do SLCTL stop. Okay, now it's up. I'm going to remove now. Now it's removed. So if I check it again at uh, CRCTL at resource, it is gone. Services removed. Okay, I'm going to next. Uh, we already checked, uh, you know, um, using SRCTL config. You can see your configuration properties, server pool, and then what are the dependencies, hard dependencies, and then you can modify them. And then how to start and stop. Uh, you know, if you need it, I will show you once again. What I will do, I will recreate my services. Okay, add services. I will add it now. And then I'm going to rerun it again. Dependencies, I'm going to show you dependencies now. My services and DevDB. Sorry, let me modify my source name okay it should be my db my services that is service okay that's correct but i need to run it as a root user i will do it on mode 2 okay you can see here right all the dependencies this particular service and name of the service type and uh, you know dependency descriptions and uh, where the dependency agent file name okay start dependency right it depends upon database it depends upon vip net one and uh, this is start dependency and there's a stop dependency right database and vip of that net one right all this dependency you can see using this csl property csl properties and then that concludes my today's uh, topic how you can define your service and how to start and stop how to change your uh, service properties and how to remove your service and then how service uh, registration works there is a l, l register process and a listener register process 
will discover your service and then it will register with your listener uh, with the help of, uh, and passing the information database instance name and host name and the ip addresses so those information it will pass and then it will register with your listener so with this uh, uh, topic uh, uh, as usual like i used to ask uh, the question my today's question is uh, uh, let me write my today's question is what are the advantages or what are the uses of uh, you know these services we have our uh, listener up and running and we we can use listener to connect to my database but what is the advantage what is the use of uh, creation of these uh, services uh, please do answer uh, please do comment your answer in my youtube channel uh, my next session i'm going to answer that what is the use uh, the question is what is the uses of uh, services in rack right the question is what are the advantages or use cases of creating a services in a rack please do uh, comment your answers uh, you know i will answer in uh, my next session thank you guys